guys what's up so again uh, this we will be dealing with environment and ecology uh, this time i'll be teaching a species and certain facts which were left before so this is the youtube channel and academy this is presented by me if you want any query or any doubt to be resolved very very soon you can just message me at my facebook page facebook.com slash official. do like the video uh, do like the page and uh, you can comment in the comment section below as well as on the comment section in the facebook post that is the only way i actually get to know that whether you have liked the video or not so ecology is a term which is coined by ernst haeckel it is a scientific study of interactions it is also interrelationship among organisms and their environment we all know it what we didn't know is ramdev mishra is father of ecology in india moving forward environment is sum total of all the conditions and influences that affect the development and life of all organisms on earth Sometimes you also call it as habitat, but habitat is a quite narrow term, while environment is a very very broad term. Population includes one species, but that is the only point you should remember. All organisms of a single species living at one place and local populations are called as deems. Then community, a group of organisms of different species. This is the key word, different species. Population is single species. So community is equals to uh, many many populations. Many uh, populations is that understood so that includes multiple populations then biological hierarchy starts from DNA and RNA moves on to cell then to tissues group of cells is tissues a uh, group of tissues is organs so let's say muscle tissue then organ will be let's say spleen stomach brain then individual organism is you and me where biological hierarchy ends ecological hierarchy starts so it starts from organism then moves on to many organisms of single popular uh, species is population then many population combines to form community community along with environment form ecosystem and huge ecosystems are called as biomes and finally we have biosphere that is the entire earth then we have organism is the smallest and the most basic unit of ecological study it can be small it can be large it can be unicellular like bacteria it can be multicellular like us uh, what is natural cryopreservation? Cryo, cryo means cold, preservation means preservation. Naturally, uh, assume outside temperature is minus 25 degrees Celsius, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. So, why does not the water of the cells freeze and organism, how can they survive below 0 degrees Celsius? So, there are various uh, things which help in prevention of body fluid from freezing. They include sugar, trehalose, these are the compounds antifreeze glycoproteins peptides and other compounds so you must remember these names that is how an organism who is living in minus 30 or minus 40 degrees celsius prevent the formation of ice crystals then what is mimicry mimicry is equals to like a species uh, it behaves in a certain way so that it mimics either the appearance or it mimics the certain behavior of other species most common example is batesian mimicry so what happens is let's say uh, a thing is not palatable that is not eatable because of its very very dry taste or very very bad taste so other species will try to look like that and it will behave in certain way so that is an example of batesian mimicry it can also look like a, a very very poisonous kind of a species so that will be a noxious species then uh, behavioral responses are also there in adaptation so where desert lizards they bask in the sun because they cannot regulate their own temperature they absorb heat when body temperature drops but when the body temperature is very very high outside so they move away when ambient temperature that is ambient means environmental temperature starts increasing similarly desert rodents they burrow into the soil to hide and escape from the above ground heat uh, one more passing remark the tiger census in project tigers in our national parks is done often by pug marks and fecal pellets so that is how we know how many tigers are surviving then we have ecotone and edge effect they are related so ecotone is a transition area this is the most important point so if this is the beach and this is ocean so this is becomes a ecotone that is the transition area between two biomes uh, two communities they meet integrate it can be narrow or wide it can be broad or it has sharp boundary line it may be local or it may be regional what happens is ecotone is it increase biodiversity in an ecotone is called as edge effect so it refers to the changes in population or community structures that occur at the boundary of two habitats it leads to greater biodiversity example estuary uh, that is partly enclosed coastal body of brackish water with rivers or 
streams flowing into it these are the keywords what is estuary it is uh, where river and river mouth where it enters into sea it can also be a partially enclosed coastal body with a free connection to the open sea then we have ecocline i have already talked about thermocline what was have we heard the term epilimnion metalimnion and hypolimnion so if you have not heard these words watch video 1.1 to 1.8 then come back here to see it epilimnion is the topmost layer thermocline is the metalimnion that is the rapidly falling temperature in a lake and then there is hypolimnion without any gradient so ecocline is different from ecotone because it is a physical transition zone ecotone is more of a uh, zone which extends beyond it is very very short it is between two systems it can be a thermocline it can be a chemocline where chemical temperature occurs halocline where salinity occurs or pycnocline where density varies so pycno means density halo means salinity chemo means chemical thermo means temperature so there are gradients so that is called as ecocline then we have biological that is phytoclimatic spectrum it is the ratio or percentage of different life forms in any plant community is very very simple because phyto means plants their biotic potential is the maximum reproductive capacity of any species do you know if bacteria if a single bacteria who let's say uh, doubles in one minute so by the end of the year how many bacteria will be there by the end of the year the number of bacteria will be more than the atoms in the universe how many of you know it the number of the bacteria will be more than the number of atoms in the universe so so that is why biotic potential can never be realized never be realized it is always constrained by limited resources and competition from other species these are very very key concepts and you will take a lot of time to remember them but just watch this video again and again uh, biological hierarchy uh, is obviously we know domain kingdom phylum class order family genus species so for us uh, the species is sapiens then genus is homo you, you know these things then class is mammalia phylum chordata kingdom animalia order hominidae these are the things which you should be knowing about us that is human beings so you can remember it by dumb kids prefer candy over fancy green salad or if you don't want to remember domain then it becomes kids put cat on fiery gas stove so kids for kingdom phylum for put cat for class order for on family for fiery genus for gas and species for stove so kids put cat on fiery gas stove or dumb kids prefer candy over fancy green salad they are very good mnemonics help you remember then altruism means a behavior of an individual uh, in english parlance it is called as sacrifice uh, but it is something different it has to increase the chance of survival of others of the same species this is altruism in ecology it is seen in spotted deer and many many other uh, species communication between species happen via first is the chemical signals it includes pheromones pheromones are the hormones which are secreted by the individual of a some species and they are detected by the individuals of the same species and they signal many things like fight or it signals reproduction it signals start of breeding season etc then tactile signals is by touch visual signals is by the uh, eyes or olfact olfactory signals also there by pheromones and auditory signals via ears olfaction means smell then we have speciation the process of creation of new species is called as speciation uh, it is done by separation of population of plants and animals till they are no longer able to interbreed if you keep them separate uh, long enough their gametes will not fuse fertilization will not occur and they will not be able to interbreed they develop into independent evolutionary units and they cannot produce fertile off offspring because of genetic differences what is species a species is the largest group of organisms who are capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring so a human living in iceland is also same homo sapiens as well as human living in papua new guinea is also homo sapiens a human living in arctic ocean is also and human living in sri lanka so each and every human being on this planet earth is capable of interbreeding that is why we are single species that is homo sapiens so it is the basic unit of classification they has to be similar in structure function they have a genetic pool where they have uh, the common genes and they can interbreed under natural conditions there are certain exceptions to it interbreeding can happen between 
let's say a male donkey and female horse which will produce mule uh, it can also happen between a male lion and a female tiger which will produce liger and tiglon is produced by male tiger plus lioness but what is the uh, exception why it's called partial exception because these organisms are not fertile they are 99 percent sterile then we have endemic species endemic species are endemism means local they are found only in particular area there are two endemic areas in india that is the indo-burma hotspot which includes himalayas plus northeast region and we have western ghats and indo-burma so these are the two hotspots which have high degree of endemicism then we move on to concept called as keystone species it has a disproportionately large effect on its community's character please please pay attention and environment relative to its numerical strength it plays a critical role in maintain and determine the types and numbers of other species in the community it is like uh, have you seen this arch so this is arch on which the entire building is uh, there but this stone here if it, it, it bears the least weight but if it collapses the entire arch collapses so that is why the keystone species such which has very very less number very very less number let's say only 50 20 tigers they have very very less biomass 20 tigers 100 kgs so they will have 2000 kgs of biomass yet if only of only 20 tigers are removed entire ecosystem will collapse so what are the types of uh, keystone species predators so there is jaguar it is seen in south and central america that is brazil amazon etc it can feed on up to 87 species and hence a small number of such predators prevent herbivorous species from eliminating plant species and they prevent dramatical alteration of the ecosystem similarly sea otter it predates over sea urchin who otherwise would have killed coral reefs and kelp roots very very important kelp roots provides thousands of other species habitat and nutrition it also increases productivity so if there is no sea otter so sea urchin will proliferate like anything they will destroy kelp roots and coral reefs then various pollinators are obviously there honeybees honeybees is the single most important keystone species if honeybees are removed entire earth will be devoid of life it is said that so honeybees are the most important one so they are if they are dependent upon single tree for their nectar what happens is the tree species automatically becomes a keystone species even they should not be large in size honeybee is very small mycorrhiza the fungus which is microscopic a unique fungal species can which is helping the higher plant roots absorb nutrients from the soil it is extremely important because if it is removed the entire ecosystem will collapse in african savanna when elephants move they convert they destroy trees and they convert it into grasslands so the grass entire african savanna is grassland ecosystem so if elephants are removed it will convert into a forest ecosystem then we have something called as ecosystem engineers so in north america we have prairie dogs what they do is they burrow which provide the nesting area for themselves as well as other species their tunnel systems prevent the storage of water and they help the channel rain water into water table it prevents soil erosion it also prevents runoff of the water they increase aeration of the soil because they eat and the they also decrease the grass uh, size so other species can feed on the grass can you see how much it is there the reverse soil compaction it helps in cattle grazing so matlab, it is such a huge impact which these prairie rocks are creating by becoming engineers engineering meaning they are creating burrows so if they are removed entire ecosystem will be threatened similarly beaver you must have heard about beaver dam so they create dams and first of all what they do is they cut the tree so by cutting down tree they cut down the stream to a pond or a swamp now what happens this swamp uh, the riparian area now the riparian area is converted and it provides benefits to infinite species literally like amphibians salmon songbirds etc so if they do not cut trees if they do not form dams this entire ecosystem will not exist in the first place then we have indicator species also called as sentinel organisms so they define a trait or characteristic of environment that is a species who can indicate something example air or water pollution the most important indicator is lichen they are used to monitor the health of environment uh, the function population status can reveal what degree of ecosystem integrity is still present a species may delineate an ecoregion or indicate as a disease outbreak pollution they can indicate these kind of things they act as an early warning mechanism example lichen they cannot survive in air pollution as simple as that they will die so if lichen is present it means the air is free of pollution 
similarly presence of stone fly is a very very good thing in water it's not a bad thing it indicates very very high concentration of oxygen so it means the water is not polluted because they are extremely sensitive to water pollution and if oxygen decreases because of increase in biological oxygen demand so stone fly will not survive then we have exotic species so any introduced species also called as alien species also called as non indigenous species also called as non native species it is a species which was endemic to outside world and now it has been introduced outside its natural distributional range due to anthropogenic activity that is man activities either deliberately or accidental now they can become invasive species when if they have a negative effect on local ecosystem they compete with the local species for similar limited resources which led to decline or extinction of indigenous species is that understood so first example is nile perch so nile perch introduction into lake victoria in east africa led to extinction of 200 species of cichlid species can you see one species introduced 200 species gone carrot grass obviously we know it's called carrot grass parthenium similarly lantana it is seen in himachal and water hyacinth ecornia crassipes it is called as terror of bengal that is the terror which it created it covers the entire pond and the people used to fall in it it used to cover entire pond so you can't figure out how deep the pond is they are invasive weed species they have caused widespread environmental damage then we have african catfish clarius it was illegally introduced in india for better aquaculture it is posing to threat to our own catfishes then we have flagship species and umbrella species they are more or less the similar terms they are all related to conservation biology let's say there is a project tiger going on so if you save the tiger not only you save tiger you save 100000 species which are living in that particular habitat so tiger is a flagship species as well as an umbrella species so it raises the profile of a particular species let's say tiger which are popular they have charismatic species they can conjure awe and they serve as symbols and rallying points to stimulate conservation awareness and action example bengal tiger giant panda especially in the china then african elephant in africa asian elephant in asia umbrella species is such a species if they are saved their requirements include the requirements of many many other species so they help in protecting these species indirectly and they make up the ecological community of its habitat and it helps in the conservation related decisions so tigers in india so project tiger was launched to save the tiger and thereby its habitat and other species within it so guys uh, this was all about species uh, so this is the ninth video do watch all the videos they are awesome they are full of fun and will take you less than 2 hours to watch all of them so if you want me to make more videos on environment and ecology or any other high yield topic do let me know so if you do like the video uh, hit the like button below uh, i'll appreciate it and also go to my facebook page and hit the like button there and comment on the post on my facebook page if you want me to resolve any doubt so that's it uh, this is the youtube channel and academy do click here to subscribe all the awesome cool videos more than 300 videos are there so if you still have any query you can ping me at my facebook page that is facebook.com slash my name roman saini dot official you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle at roman saini thank you for watching the video have an awesome day